Phantoloids Podcast, here to tell you that we've teamed up with Vault Comics to help bring some of their creators a spotlight. Vault Comics, based out of Missoula, Montana, have been bringing some of the best fantasy, sci-fi, and horror comics to print since 2016. We're getting the chance to read some of their series early, and we're getting to discuss with the creative team the vision for their series. We're very happy to be collaborating with Vault Comics and sharing these number ones with you. Welcome to Exploring the Vault. Cue the intro. Paneloids Podcast, baby. All right, Kyle here with Pierre, as you heard, and a very special guest who I will have introduce herself. Hi there, I'm Corinne Howell. I'm a comic book artist on Vault's Comics Barbaric Queen of Swords. Very, very cool book, which we will get into after some fluff questions to start this out. Tell us a little about your career in comics. My career in comics, let's see, I want to say, oh wow, just realizing it now. I started right out of college back in 2013, so I guess, yeah, it's been 10 years since Wow. I graduated college. I started out in basically boys action comics like Ben 10 and worked with this media on like little kids books for a while. And then I did an apprenticeship with Sean Gordon Murphy, who if you don't know, he does the Batman White Knight books right now. And now he's a long time friend. And after that apprenticeship, I basically shot off and I worked on Batmite with DC Comics, which was pretty much a bit of a lifetime goal was working on Transformers with IDW when they still had it and then worked on some other independent titles with Oni Press and I've worked with like Back to the Future. I've worked with Boom Studios. I've worked with so many that I'm actually having a hard time remembering what the books I've worked that's, on. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> but in most recent years, I have found myself, I guess, and I found myself in horror. I love drawing horror. I love drawing demons, gore, scary things, anything that goes bump in my night and it makes your skin crawl. Recent books include Dark Red with the, what was formerly known as Aftershock. <laughs> I've worked on Shadow Service, which was also with Vault. Both really good horror books. If you really enjoy vampires, you can check out Dark Red, and if you enjoy basically James Bond meets the occult, plus a bunch of demons and gross monsters, you can check out shadow service and i currently have my own sort of character that i do illustrations with like every couple of weeks her name is lilith and she is basically a creature demon lady that eats people that piss her off very very cool resume i feel like you worked on every nerd's dream pretty awesome i am a lifelong transformers fan and you can imagine my excitement when hearing about the new beast wars movie coming yeah. out soon i am oh so my excited god <laughs> definitely on the top of my radar that and little mermaid no i'm just kidding not little mermaid <laughs> i'm not excited about that personally you just don't but uh the 2d version stop making these yeah live no but beast wars go crazy yeah, go live I'm actually so excited for that but based off of just that list of comics and things you've worked on it sounds like your art form definitely can kind of work with these different mediums and different styles that you kind of put to test i mean transformers to bat might back to kind of what we're doing now queen of swords i think they're so drastically different from what you probably have to do yeah i mean it's like starting out i guess i was more animated base. I had a lot of friends that were storyboard artists or were becoming storyboard artists by that time. And so I kind of tried to go for storyboarding for a while and it didn't work out. So I was all in for comics and I guess my style kind of went really well with Batmite and some of the other younger kid comics for a while. But when I hit Transformers, I was like, okay, here we go. New <laughs> boss fight. Here we are. <laughs> That's awesome. So I guess talking about your art style, how do you describe your routine? How many hours do you draw per day? How how often do you draw? Like, what's your daily routine look like? Oh, God. Well, we're going off what I've kind of been finishing up today. I have, like, a double spread that I've been working on right now. And my typical day, like, my alarm goes off at 9, but I end up waking up, <laughs> like, an hour or two later because I'm too tired. Reasons being is I have two fat cats that don't like to sleep when they should. Anyway, I wake up a little later than expected. I work out, and then I get to work basically immediately after. I work until the page is done. I typically do a page a day, depending on the page that is. If it's like a double spread that's like a two-day job, especially like with a lot of detail. I think I recall, oh God, there was a double spread I did for Shadow Service that involved a dragon popping out of a building, so to speak. And it was this massive thing 
and it took me three days to finish because there was just so much detail that I put in. But yeah, usually I work until the page is done. And then once it's done, I'm typically done for the day. But even then I end up just on the couch and drawing even more because it's just me time and I can draw whatever that I want when it's me time. And most of the time it's either fan art or my character Lilith. That's pretty intense. I mean, I feel like every artist that we've had on here, I feel like their routine is just like jam packed with just drawing all day. It's so hard to get away from that. But it's something you enjoy. So that's cool. Before we get into Queen of Swords, I'm sure you have recommendations for us like books, comics, TV, film, whatever you've been kind of getting into lately. What, what would you recommend? I'm sure you want to recommend Queen of Swords. Definitely. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, it's Queen of Swords. would totally recommend, you know, checking out Lilith on my Instagram and Twitter. But I guess like recently, I've been getting into or back into really, I don't know if any youngins god am i that old these youngins <laughs> i guess kids in high school and in college i guess like i've been getting back into full metal alchemist recently and rewatched brotherhood and i'm just like oh god it's been so long <laughs> highly recommend that i recently watched the new remake of trigun trigun stampede that came out a couple months ago highly recommend that it's only 12 episodes long but it's animated incredibly and i was blown away at how well they're like taking to heart the original story of the manga. I highly recommend the Trigon manga, which is Trigon and Trigon at Maximum. Witch Hat Atelier, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a cute manga. I grew up mostly with manga than in actual American comics. Is that where you draw most of your like inspiration is from manga? And Definitely. Anime? Yeah, I grew up yeah. with uh, Trigon, Inuyasha, the never-ending manga of Inuyasha, Full Metal Alchemist, Cowboy Bebop, God, what else was there? Fully Cooly. It's kind of funny every time my friends talk about American comics or whatever books they grew up with as a kid I'm just sitting there like I don't know what you're talking about I grew up with manga so I have to like search it up so I'm a little bit of the odd one out highly recommend Witch Hat Atelier which is also beautifully drawn by the way like this artist is incredible I want to say the youth nib or something but they're incredible and Levias Levias is a new one that I recently got into as well all beautiful manga it's incredible what these artists can do yeah I've been trying to read more than just American superhero stuff Stuff, just generally and I've read a big chunk of Claymore. I don't know if you've read any of that. And, oh, uh, I've delved in that occasionally. I was looking at your Instagram like, this is like really cool, crazy stuff. And then digging more, I'm like, okay, this is the same character a few times. So Lilith is a character you created and just something you continuously make. There's a lot of Lilith everywhere. I think before I tried to get it weekly, but recently due to my schedule, it's been kind mm. of more than that. And I've become a little bit ambitious with poses and compositions and stuff like that with her. But yeah, she she just started off as a doodle and I think it was like right within the pandemic or towards the end or whatever. Like I'm pretty sure everybody else can relate that they're feeling a little bit low and you're kind of stuck inside. And I mean, I'm also dealing with like I have obsessive compulsive disorder. My OCD is not like typical what people think. It's pretty intense in my brain half the time. And Lilith was just basically my way of kind of like dealing with it. And then she kind of just blossomed from there and she became like my inner rage whenever I'm pissed off at someone. Thing. She just became so much fun to draw. And it didn't expect anybody to really like her, especially when she just started off as like this stupid doodle that I did. It's a really cool character. I definitely want to see more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's jump into it now, what everyone's waiting for. If you would, a quick synopsis of the first issue of Queen of Swords. So the first issue of Queen of Swords is basically you are following our trio, which is Deadheart, Ka, and Sarah. It picks up from the main line of Barbaric, and it is basically you are kind of being introduced to Sarah and a bit of her background and understanding why she's the way she is while also coupled with fighting ghost pirates and demons and shit and blood and gore everywhere along with a sassy talking sword named Gabar which I personally love yeah the sword is cool I love the talking sword now for anyone who doesn't read Barbaric do you feel like they need to is this fine on its own I mean personally I feel like you can jump into Queen of Swords either way but I highly recommend reading Barbaric because mm. it's basically kind of in the Barbarian on steroids, even though Arnie was on steroids in the movie. But yeah, I think you can jump into Queen of Swords without having to read Barbaric, but I highly recommend reading Barbaric. It's insane and incredible and so much fun to read. And it goes by very quick. That's mm. the crazy part. It's like the minute you start it and then all of a sudden you're done and it's like, oh God, where's more? How did that go by so quickly? And it's so much fun to read. But I mean, like if you want to get a better understanding of what happens 
and like who are the other characters i guess that pop up in queen of swords i would highly recommend reading barbaric first the main okay. characters were first introduced in barbaric or is it just the same world no they were first introduced into barbaric i think this latest run is going to be where these characters come in oh that is kind of cool then i like that kind of like these characters come together and it sparks these different relationships between these characters so there's like a lot of mistrust between a couple of them and it goes on into queen of swords from there so with the sword right Mm -hmm. did that come from something in barbaric other than her having the sword like was that something that was already established where she got this sword from yeah gavar was established in barbaric before queen of swords happens yeah i think that relationship is actually really fun (laughs) it's almost like he doesn't want her to have it (laughs) like dominatrix and sub relationship between gavar and dead heart swing me harder mommy like that's literally (laughs) what it is yeah (laughs) yeah so what's it like working with michael moresi it's pretty cool like he pretty much gives me a lot of free reign when it comes to establishing you know composition and artistic whatever freedom he's very specific when it comes to like he's really good at establishing the mood in a panel whenever he's writing down a script and it helps me i guess visualize what i can put down on the page but he's always so much fun to work with and he's so very open to ideas whenever it comes to artistic direction how did you guys get paired up it was towards the end of shadow service that my editor adrian came forward to me about doing queen of swords and i was like sure let's go ahead do it and apparently nathan who works on barbaric the artist so nathan was apparently the one that was pushing for me to take queen of swords for a while apparently that's cool random question do you own any swords you know being you draw them do you own any well, she's looking I, for them i have two of them i have a rapier sword and this knockoff asian sword that my boyfriend had in his house before we moved in together okay so that's currently in my office right now you guys have like sword fights no, I have a feeling we would break something if we tried. I had a lightsaber battle at one point. Off topic. 21st birthday, I woke up with like a circle, like in my chest. <laughs> Like a big, perfect circle bruise. Apparently, yeah, I lost the battle. Oh, so no. I found that out in the morning. You got cauterized when you got <laughs> yeah. stabbed. All I know is felt it the next day. <laughs> like, what is this pain? <laughs> so back to the book. <laughs> Are there any Easter eggs hidden within issue one? I think I tried to sneak in Legolas, but that didn't work. Because I think one of my editors caught it or just didn't end up looking like Legolas or something like that. I tried to sneak in some Lord of the Rings characters in there because I am a Tolkien fan but I didn't want to get in trouble. I just saw that Similarian, Andy Circus is actually going to do a reading, like an audio book. Oh, of, nice. Because I tried to read it years and years ago, but it was I was too it's young. A, it's a like, long read. Yeah, it's a long it read. Much. So is there anything in the story that your art influenced that maybe, maybe it changed something because like you had a better idea and you're like, oh, I drew it this way. I mean, as an artist, you're always growing. It doesn't matter how far you are along in your career. You should still be growing and still be studying and, you know, perfecting your craft even though perfection doesn't exist. But I was definitely in the middle of beefing up my style, so to speak, and my skills. I was reading a lot of Levias. Levias, I think, was really helping me understand in terms of like focusing more on the details in your facial structure and especially the eyes, the way that this artist draws eyes. It's incredible. And it's just like so much emotion in just one face. And I was pretty much just studying that manga the whole time I was starting off with Queen of Swords to really beef up my style. Yeah, as I'm reading it, I can almost put voices in my head, but like everything, like there was one scene, she loses her like shit, seeing her emotions when she's pushed to the edge, I think you captivated that just the way she kind of explodes. And as you see that, you know, I'm sure it gets more and more in depth as you're going through the uh, the story. Recently, just like in this third issue that I'm working on right now, it's like a lot of people screaming, a lot of angry <laughs> people. And I'm like, God, I'm just gonna be really good at drawing angry people at the end of this. So one scene, and it's funny, because I was gonna make Pierre bring it up. I don't know if he wanted to, but I'm gonna do it to him anyway. I read it first. And I was like, Pierre, you gotta read this. Let's work on some question. Like, let's get into this. And you know, Pierre just doesn't answer me. So I started sending him little tiny zoomed in screenshots of a certain party scene to try and bait him into being like, you gotta read this. (laughs) And 
so yeah good job with the party scene i'm gonna call it and i assume creative freedom was somewhat there because that would have been an interesting conversation of back and forth with the writer for sure they just basically gave me free reign i would say in shadow service there is a scene in that book where there is some saucy party happening in a church mm -hmm. i went full reign and adrian and all my other editors are just like fuck yeah they're just so happy about it they're just like michael and adrian just kind of were like here have this this is you now so how did that conversation go oh god there is a really funny story because there's also another fun saucy scene when i was drawing dark red as well vampire fun times in the middle <laughs> so of this the is your thing i this guess so thing. yeah the thing that makes it funny for me is that my dad had called me in the middle of me working on that specific page and he goes what are you doing and i was like i'm working he's like what are you drawing today and i was like vampire orgy <laughs> <laughs> and there was just silence on the other end for like a beat and he's just like all right didn't yeah. expect that i was like you asked yeah it's not your typical like oh i'm drawing superman he's just waiting for the day when i can tell him i'm drawing batman because my dad's a huge batman fan but i will say now day. knowing what you can do and knowing that you've worked on transformers who Ooh, knows what we'll the see. future might hold transformers party who knows yeah i'm a screaming giant robot nerd just ready to rock <laughs> when it comes to transformers <laughs> so is there anything you did differently with your art technique with this series? I definitely started looking into using different brushes on Clip Studio, which is the program I primarily work on now. I don't work on Photoshop anymore, mainly because it's just gotten too expensive. At this point, Photoshop is just used whenever I need to get something ready for print. But Clip Studio has this abundance of assets, as they call it, where it's just brushes and character models and like reference material. And I started looking into tweaking my ink style, I wanted to look more like a nib. And it's surprising how a lot of brushes in Clip Studio assets actually look like a nib. And so I was very happy to try out some new brushes on this book and they are so far sticking. Yeah, I don't know how I would describe your art. It's like clean, but it's like gritty at the same time, if that makes sense. I will be buying more than I've already purchased. I've ordered a few variants <laughs> and whatnot, if I'm being honest. Oh, but speaking of that, I'm going to do a screen share and hopefully I do it quickly and not. So this is cover A. It is fantastic. So when you go to the store, everybody, you're going to buy this one. And then when you're at the store, you're going to go, oh, look, there's cover B. And you're also going to buy this one. Now, this one is by Nathan Gooden. He's the main artist on Barbaric, and he did the second cover. This one's pretty crazy. Then we have, as you mentioned earlier, there's Sean Gordon Murphy. Cover. And there's actually another one, a black and white oh, one, which I might I have, have to hunt down. Right? Yeah, his, his black and white work. Fun fact about the colored version, my boyfriend did the colors. Really? The colored version, yeah. Tell him very good job. I will buy that one, too but I might buy the other one as well. But yes, the Sean Gordon Murphy covers. And then there's this one, which I had trouble finding information on, but apparently it's a one in 50 incentive cover, but I could not find it anywhere for sale. And the one place I did completely sold out. Have you seen this one before? I've seen it in the PDF that I got recently. So this is probably going to be the hardest one to find. Who's the general colors doing your covers? I think it is KG. I always mean to like make note of the colors and, and never do but really makes your art pop, especially with this one. Aww. And then this is cover A for number three. Lots of swords on this one. I wanted to do something with kind of Mooka inspired, but I mean, I love just design when it comes to covers. I'm such mm -hmm. a huge nerd for that stuff. Oh yeah, I prefer that a lot of the times too. So now we have, <laughs> <laughs> I did buy yours before I saw it. And then I found it by accident on Reddit. And I'm happy that I bought it because it is 100% my favorite out of all the covers I've seen. Oh, so wow. it is on the oh, way. Really? I'm very excited. So there's a few though. They're calling it Vault. Is it Undressed? That's pretty yeah, clear, actually. I like that. Undressed. So there's going to be four of them so far that I found. A cover C, D, and then for number two and three also. That's it. Those are the covers. Tell us about your experience working for Vault. It's been incredible. I love working with Vault. They've been so accommodating. Like if I'm having a hard time or if I get sick, they're so open to working with my schedule. They are open to a lot of artistic freedom and ideas. Vault has been incredible to work with and I want to keep working with them. Adrian is a sweetheart, so is Damien. It's funny how they're like two brothers are running this company right now, but they've been incredible. Like there 
was a time where I pulled something in my back and I couldn't move for like a week. And they were like, it's totally fine. We'll adjust your schedule because they really wanted my work on the book and not have a fill-in. But they've always been so accommodating and so wonderful to work with. And they're so easy to work with because they're just so open to ideas and just thinking creatively. I think that's awesome compared to these big companies. That's kind of like why I like drawing horror and more independent stuff because it's just like it's just such an open genre that you can do whatever the fuck you want with it yeah like again reading everything that we've been reading from vault i guess the best way to just refreshing i think from Mm -hmm. your standpoint sounds like that too it's very refreshing so this is one of my favorite questions so who is your favorite character it's kind of in between gabar and dead heart at this point i mean i love gabar because he's just this wisecracking little shit of a talking sword but dead heart's so fun to draw because she's not your typical woman she's a barbarian she's huge she's massive she's got muscles it's just fun to draw that at other times she's also like a giant sweetheart so i love how much of a badass she is but also like she can be a huge teddy bear when she wants to be the pirate fight scene was oh yeah that was fun yeah that was really great i can't say it enough how much i like the balance of the team but gabar again that relationship between the two of them i like that whole back and forth i think you said it best mommy swing me i think swing me harder mommy swing me harder mommy (laughs) that line get clipped a lot for this episode (laughs) yeah i'm gonna tell adrian about it and i hope we can maybe put it on like some of our marketing that needs to be part of the title (laughs) swing me harder mommy all right so a very important question would you be an assassin a barbarian or a witch a witch i can do magic and shit and i can live forever (laughs) since it's a witch fair i would probably pick the same just to keep distance i don't have to do house chores or cook much anything else you'd like to say about the book definitely go check out queen of swords conan the barbarian but with sexy ladies and a talking wisecracking sword check it out we are very excited for it i always say this but i'm a little upset we got to read issue one so early because now i have to wait even longer for issue two so i'm spoiled with that we love it and amazing amazing job again i'm mad at myself for not finding your art earlier <laughs> now i feel like i need to do like a deep dive because your style is just fantastic thank you with that anything else releases anything you'd like to mention something you can hint at that maybe you're not supposed to that we can like get ahead of everybody and be like we heard it first anything like that <laughs> wink wink <laughs> uh, wink wink lilith is officially contracted i just finished writing issue one so by next year she's gonna be a book so yeah keep an eye out i'm thoroughly excited to bring my child to this world it makes a lot of sense i'm very excited for it can you say the publisher anything like it's that vault. it is vault. Vault. okay yeah. what makes it funny <laughs> for me is that like i literally came to adrian and i was like hey i got like this like quick idea for a little and he was like yes and i was like what <laughs> i was like yes it's like okay <laughs> No pitch pitch packet just went, hey, I kind of want to do a book for Liv. Okay. Drawing, writing, this is all you. Yeah, with the exception of coloring. We're still looking for a colorist right now, but I am writing and drawing pretty much the entire book. We're hoping it goes over well with the first issue. I'm super excited. A lot of the characters that you see on my page are going to be in the book. So you'll see Lilith, you'll see Penelope, you'll see Ben, her brother, and you'll see Michael. And you'll get to also see what she truly is because everybody keeps asking like, oh, I love the vampire. She's not a vampire oh i love the succubus she's not a succubus oh i love the demon she's not really a demon but yeah sure i'll go with that for right now you'll get to have a deep dive and get to know lilith and see her story and everybody else's story and go on from there and of course you know what she's known for is blood guts and murder and you'll see her disembowel a few unlucky victims but you know they deserved it so you're saying this will also not be for children? No, this is not for kids. <laughs> Though I do have a funny story. New York Comic Con last year, haven't been back for a while since before COVID or whatever. I had Lilith prints for my table. And the one specifically that's been most famous is Lilith going up the stairs and the train of her dress is behind her. And up at the bottom of the print is a bunch of dead people. And so it is Sunday. It is Kids Day in New York Comic Con. And this little girl and her dad walk by my table this girl without missing a beat comes up to my table points at the little print and goes i want that one and her dad's like you want this and she goes i want that one i'm sitting there like it was almost cartoonish how i literally just stopped as i was drawing and just like was sitting there confused and the dad just like sure you want that one and she goes i want that one and he very quietly kneels by her 
and just looks at her and goes, you're a creep. And then <laughs> looks at me and he goes, all right, we'll take it. And I'm just sitting there like, that print? The one with the blood and the guts and dead people and her walk. He goes, yeah. I was like, okay. And I sign it. I give it to them. She's so excited. She's holding it in her tiny little hands. And he looks down to her and goes, don't tell your brother. Don't show your brother. And I was like, as they're walking away, I'm just sitting there going, screw the brother. What about the mom? (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My friend who was helping me out at the table starts giggling and he goes, Dad's in trouble. Dad's in trouble. So I was like, Lilith corrupted a youth that day and I was quite proud of myself. That's great. I was gonna say I have a feeling it's gonna get into more households once this book <laughs> comes out. <laughs> I'm gonna have angry parents being like, You should censor this. You should have a better example for your children. I've gotten that a few times, but I just laugh at it. It's so funny, my it. wife, she actually brought up Lilith for the middle name, but if it was a girl. Aww. I don't know how she she even found it yay maybe a baby kyle running around (laughs) people keep also asking me if it's the biblical lilith because she apparently is in the bible she was adam's first wife oh in the lore of christianity again my lilith has no connection to any of that so completely different you're like the james gunn like debunking your own rumors on lilith (laughs) (laughs) i hope that's a good thing no it definitely is it definitely is i just feel like everyone's got their own take on what your character is and you're like no that's not it will you be at new york you think this not this year i'm planning on going next year this year did c2e2 so i was just like "Eh, i'll just do one big show a year so next year it'll be new york so last question where can everyone follow you? And specifically, where can we buy some art? I have an idea on your website, but I definitely want a commission. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. It's both the same handle. It's at Rin237. That's R-I-N-237. And then my website is RinPin.com. Most of the commissions I do are through Comic Art House. Currently, I am not open, but I will the end of June. <laughs> when I'm okay. not in the middle of a deadline. Right. So that's why I will bother you. Obviously, when Lilith is closer to release, you know who to reach out to. Yes. Pierre, I'll speak for you too. Your work on Queen of Swords is just fantastic. Like uh-huh. I really, your style's up there now with one of my favorites and want to commission. And if something happens in the name Lilith, at least now can be like, well, now I know where it's connected to. You know? <laughs> not my wife on Wikipedia. Now I have a character that's cool that I could possibly connect it to. Thank you for being on. Of course. Thank you for having me. Pal- this podcast how this podcast what's it like working with the michael maurice <laughs> <laughs> Swing me harder, Mari. Which one is this? This, this is, is Conan. She's the older okay. sister. Right, sweetheart. Oh. oh, thank you. Both wow. her and her brother, Popsicle. But she's the princess, I guess, of the household. She tries mm-hmm. to act like she's all that shit, but she really isn't. Conan will follow you everywhere and then demand attention and then yeah. try to eat your phone. Hmm. Okay. That's different. She's literally an iPad child. I think it's hilarious. Swing me harder, mommy. I'm so used to like the covers from the White Knight. Yeah. I can see it in this. Yeah, me and Pierre are in like a fight over one because we submitted to. Should Beyond. I grab it? No, just leave it there. <laughs> just rub it in his face. So, like, I got this. He knows nothing about grading. Knows nothing about signatures. Nothing about conventions. I showed him this book. They were like 500 a pop. This is like one per store cover. Anyway, long story short, I sent two. Pierre sent one. Pierre's came back 9.8. Mine came back 9.8. Six. Pierre has one where he colored in the bat symbol. He colored oh, in nice. the bat. It's literally a one of a kind. Which show was that at? Do you know? Uh, New York. Oh, I probably was there when he was doing it. I was right next to him at New York. Okay, so you saw me inadvertently. But yeah, I, I offered Pierre $1,000 for that. I told him I will hold on to it forever for him. I will not yes. sell it. You'll wait until it's worth more. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So you can take more from me. Anyway, that was that story that you didn't ask for. Swing me harder, mommy. Would you ever do a, like, Transformers commission? Of course. Hear me out, though. (laughs) Before you answer this, Transformers orgy, like, on my wall right here, right above me. Not necessarily all of them. Maybe just I knew the moment he asked, that's where it was going. But here's the thing, though. I am involved in the Transformers fandom. You know what that means? That fan art is most of the time somewhere else. Yeah. Well, yes, that's nothing new to me. All right. So, ha, I can take that commission. <laughs> <laughs>